Jersey and the campus of Seton Hall University, where tonight, inside historic Walsh Gymnasium, a matchup between the first and third place teams in Big East women's basketball, the fifth ranked Yukon Huskies taking on the Seton Hall Pirates. And hi, everybody, with Megan Clumo. I'm Alan Bestwick. Maria Marino joins us shortly. So UConn comes into this game in first place in the Big East at 8-0 in conference play, but with just the minimum of seven available players tonight. Caroline Ducharme and Ayanna Patterson are here with the team, but not available. AZ Fudd did not travel with the team here to New Jersey. She's undergoing further testing back in Connecticut. So Meg, seven players for UConn. What does that mean for the team in this game tonight? Yet again, right? They only have seven players, but you know what? They just, they have to come out and only worry about who they have. I mean, they've dealt with this all season long, and they're an incredibly resilient group of kids. And, you know, you feel for Chris, Chris Daly and Gino Oriema, they keep having to deal with this. But, you know what, the kids have to come out and just play Seton Hall. They've got to be sharp, like, they've got to be sharper and smarter the way they play the game. Interesting. Sharper and smarter keys tonight. Uh, one of the keys certainly in making them sharper and smarter will be the play of their floor general and unquestioned leader, Nika Mule. Uh, tonight, she's going to be key to UConn's effort. Yeah, especially because UConn has to start the game well against Seton Hall. They did in their contest back at the XL Center on the 21st. She brings the energy. She brings the heart. She brings the soul. She's got to get them on fire and, and positive and up-tempo early, and I think that will bode well for UConn. Our starting lineups presented tonight by Subaru of New England, Seton Hall, their 12th straight game with the same starting five on the right side of the screen for UConn. It's those five, plus Amari DeBerry and, uh, and, <laughs> and Inesh Betancourt, and those are the seven available for the Hall of Famer Gino Oriema, looking to run his record against his longtime friend and rival, Tony Bazella, to 44 and two with a win tonight. Tony Bazell in his 10th season as the Pirates head coach. He came by the table just before game time and he said one thing to us. <laughs> no transition points, no transition points, no transition <laughs> points. He wants them to start strong and not allow UConn any transition points in this first quarter. Very simple, right? <laughs> UConn on the road, <laughs> national flag loose, and we're underway. So, right? There's no one more animated than Tony Bazell. It was funny. It cracks me up. Lopez Seneschal with the first shot. No. Edwards with a good crash on the boards for the rebound, but couldn't come up with it. And the opportunity at first points in the ballgame will belong to the Pirates. Shaylin Pinkney from East Hartford, Connecticut with the ball. Where's number 21 in white? Driving to the rim high off nothing with Shaylin Hagens. UConn presses tempo. Nice job by Seton Hall getting back on defense. Floated in to a triple team. Dork to Juhas, no bucket and no foul. Seton Hall focused on that today. It's shoot around, pack the defense in the lane. Don't give up anything easy to the post play. Here's Pinkley. Maya Bembry now driving on Juhas. Defended well. Now Higgins. Kick it out to Cooks outside the three point line. And the shot is off the mark. That would have been so good for her confidence and for Seton Hall's confidence to knock down that three. They had a dreadful time with three-point shots in the game in Hartford, December 21st. Edwards, the right-hand floater goes. That's, you can't necessarily prepare for that play. Phenomenal move by Edwards. Key player to watch for the Pirates. Where's number three? Lauren Park Lane. She's their leading scorer. She and Sydney Cooks, who has the ball now. And Cooks drains the first bucket for Seton Hall. Cooks just had 20 points in their game on Wednesday. Their loss to Creighton. An outstanding score for Seton Hall. So early to a piece here. And has Seneschal working off the Edwards screen. Pulls up, pops, doesn't go. Cooks. Seton Hall will give that up all day long. Let him take the 14-footers the and so on. Even though Lopez Seneschal likes to shoot off the dribble. Park Lane, the shot was blocked by Lopez Seneschal, but they'll call Lou for a foul. Our keys to the game presented by Nissan. You've got a team that's been turning all over the ball a lot against the team in the Big East that has forced the most turnovers per game. Yeah, Seton Hall has an advantage here. If they can make UConn turn it over, 
that's one thing, but they've got to then score off of those turnovers. And a concern for Gino Oriema, we, obviously we talked about only seven healthy players. Lou Lopez Seneschal just gets called for a foul. She cannot pick up a second one in this first half. Yeah, they cannot get into foul trouble. So here's Lauren Park Lane, leader of the Big East in minutes per game. Leads the team in minutes, points, assists, field goal attempts, and three-point field goal attempts and makes. As uh, the ball tries to apply a little front court pressure. Kick they, is they, and they want to give a lot of pressure against Nika Mule. Bobby Griffin, well off the mark. It's going to go out of bounds off of Yukon. Nika Mule does not agree. But Rod Creek says, no, I made my call. Again, another play that favored Seton Hall. That's what Tony Bazella wants. He'll give up a shot off the dribble to Aubrey Griffin all day long. There's Park Lane defended by Griffin. Tries to drive. Gets that floater to go. What a tough shot. I mean, Griffin is taller. Had her hands, her arms outstretched. Could not have guarded it better. So a three-point Pirate lead. Lopez Seneschal takes the nice feed and scores the bucket. That's, you can consider that a transition bucket. Yukon loses the defensive integrity, but Amari Wright can't make the shot go. And those are the buckets Wright has to make. Floated into Juhas, gets the bucket and the foul. Again, you, uh, Seton Hall's defense not set up. UConn attacks. You know, a transition bucket doesn't have to be just a wide open layup. Defense wasn't set. UConn attacked two possessions in a row. So the foul on Sydney Cooks, her first, and Dorka Juhas will go to the free throw line for UConn. Double doubles in her last three games and five of her eight games since returning for the missed time with a broken thumb. Missed the free throw, but an offensive rebound for Leah Edwards. An aggressive defensive energy by Seton Hall. Ten to shoot. Lopez Seneschal makes space, but the shot won't fall. What a tough move, just couldn't get it to drop. Nice job splitting the defense. Griffin defending Park Lane, and Edwards with the rebound. Wow, Edwards just wanted that ball more than anybody else. Edwards defended by Bembry. Kicks to Griffin. That shot goes for Aubrey. That's a better shot for Griffin. I mean, she's worked on her mid to long range game. But that's a terrific play by UConn in transition yet again. Four of the five Huskies on the floor have points in the eight that they've scored. Three point UConn lead. Here's Amari Wright. Kick to the corner to Bembry. That goes. Maya Bembry, the senior from here in West Orange, New Jersey. Griffin slips the defense, and the nice pass in from Lopez Seneschal. Good spacing there by UConn, reading this defense very well. Good pass by Lopez Seneschal, great cut by Griffin. Here's Wright. near the midway mark already of this first quarter. Shaylin Hagens now. Right inside the Cooks, deflected by Juhas. Great active hands by Juhas. Mule pushes up ahead, and Lopez Seneschal puts the brakes on and drains the bucket. That is a lot harder than she made it look to be able to stop like that in transition. Not drag the foot and get called for traveling that we see so much of. The old school jump stop, I'm a big fan of it. Five-point UConn lead. Here's Park Lane, defended by Mule. Gets the shot away. That missed. The rim went wide to the right. Aubrey Griffin runs and missed the layup. I think she thought there might be contact. There was contact there. No whistle. Lopez Seneschal has to. This is where she's got to be smarter. She's already got one foul. Mule from the free throw line, no. Cooks with the rebound for Seton Hall. Got three Pirates sitting at the scorer's table waiting to check in. Nobody off the UConn bench yet. And again, a reminder, <laughs> there's only two of them available that are and, on the bench. And players on both teams look gassed right now. What a pace to this opening segment of the game. Long ball missed from Hagans. Fight for the rebound. Bembry comes up with it. 
That's going to be a three-second violation and a turnover to UConn. And a timeout. Six minutes and six seconds played in the ball game. A breathless pace so far. UConn by five. Just under four to go. Quarter number one here at Seton Hall. UConn leading the Pirates by 12-7. Uh, and let's go to Meg for a look at Kumo's Court Vision. Brought to you by Hill New Haven Hill. So far, really good spacing for UConn. Okay, now watch this. We're going to freeze it right about there. See, look, Juhas up here right in the middle of the lane. Her defender on the high side. That's going to be critical. Also, spacing over here. This kid can't cheat too much. That's what allowed that opening for Lopez Seneschal. Now, similarly, the very next possession, Juhas right in the middle of the lane. There's no weak side help. See, this kid is waiting for her player. She should be down a little further. They talked about that in shoot around. Juhas wide open, the nice pass from Lopez Seneschal. There was no weak side help. Lopez Seneschal leading scorer in the ball game for UConn. Lorca Juhas with two points on one of two shooting with a couple of rebounds to go with it. See some of the numbers on the graduate student Juhas in her final season of college basketball. Same five on the floor for UConn. Here is Juhas. Kicks Lopez Seneschal for three. Shot way short. And here's Park Lane. Gets it ahead to Victoria Keenan. Keenan, quite a comeback story for Seton Hall. Let's the three go early. Missed. Pinkley fights for the rebound with Juhas. Going to be out of bounds. It'll be Seton Hall's basketball. I like how Keenan wasted no time coming in and jacking up the three. Good hustle by both teams. And Look Dorka out. in someone's lap. Tight spaces here at Historic Walsh Gymnasium. This is old school. Fun though. Here's Keenan. Missed all of last season and only played her first game about a few days ago. Long shot by Park Lane. Missed and wow. rebound from Julia Edwards. 35 feet? She's made those before. Absolutely. Juhas, 4-3. Critical for UConn that, you, that Juhas can knock down some long-range shots today. She struggled with that a little bit the last couple of games. The three-point shot. They've got that one. Especially without FUD. They don't have a, a ton of three-point shooters. Keenan takes it to the rim. No foul call. Rebound fight. Edwards will come away with it on the run. Numbers for UConn. And she'll get the bucket and the foul. What an outstanding play by Aaliyah Edwards. Had a head of steam from the minute she got the ball. Look at she tracks it down. Runs the floor in traffic. Finishes. I mean, that's just a heck of a move. It's not like she's a guard. I mean, she's <laughs> at 6 3. But you're right. She hit the gas pedal and was at full speed when she got that ball. Free throw doesn't go. Nice box out for the rebound by Jayla Jordan for Seat Hall. 10 point UConn lead. Mule fighting with the ball, and she's going to make a foul on Park Lane. And that's the, that's the stuff that Nika Mule does. You got to take the bad with the good. I mean, she's got great energy. She created the steal, and yet she held on to Park Lane's arm. It was a good call. See, great effort. She grabbed her arm with the left hand. That's a foul. Yep. You undid the good by that bad. Kind of a silly one. So the first on Mule. And Seton Hall will inbound the ball. Edwards almost picked off the inbound pass. Park Lane kicks it to the corner to Alexia Alesh. She misses everything on the three attempt. Good extra pass from Park Lane. Lopez Seneschal. Good no pass to you, huh? Seton Hall guarded that well. Griffin is outside. Closed out. Drives instead. And is going to draw a foul underneath. That's going to be Jayla Jordan who commits the foul. How do you like this uh, opening eight minutes effort by the UConn team? Well, having just seen them play on Sunday, much better <laughs> flow offensively. And Seton Hall is a good defensive team, but UConn has better spacing. Oriema's club, I think, has done a much better job of controlling what they can control. Running offense with a purpose. I think we 
I, I used the word awkward at one point to describe Sunday's game. Not seeing that tonight. That was kind. <laughs> well, so Aubrey Griffin at the free throw line. Now the leading scorer in the game for UConn with six points. Seton Hall on the back end of an 11-0 UConn run. There's Park Lane. No. And Juhas boxes out for the rebound nicely. Two Huskies ahead of the field. Edwards will get fouled. You just used the word awkward a moment ago, and that would <laughs> describe the end of that play. Now the pass, obviously, it, it looks like she was going to Aubrey Griffin, but both Edwards and Griffin did such a good job running up the floor, almost too close to one another. Last game against Seton Hall, December 21st. Leah Edwards, game high, 23 points. Six rebounds, four assists. And was perfect for the free throw strike. It's funny, though. You talk about Aaliyah Edwards last year, much to the chagrin of Tony Bazella. Yeah. And it, it doesn't even compare to, to what she is this year. She's such, such a stronger player, a better scorer. She's such a better all-around basketball player. It's not even comparable. And she has brought the energy tonight. You can see that on the court for the Huskies. Turnaround from Cooks goes. Nice one from Sydney Cooks. Cooks also playing with a lot of confidence. Wants the ball. Aggressive when she gets it. Kind of one of those players from Seton Hall feels like she has something to prove against UConn. There is Edwards, left alone by Cooks, and drops the two. That's where Edwards' game is so different. She consistently knocks down that foul line jumper. It's a game changer. Seton Hall really struggling from outside. Maya Bembry will miss that one. Nice rebound by Satterfield. Blocked by Edwards. Such smart help defense there by Edwards. Seeing the ball and swatting it away. See the shot coming off the rim. Griffin got pushed out of the way. Edwards just didn't give up. And didn't foul there, too. Gets a hand on that pass. A sloppier play would have been an easy foul call on Edwards on that last one. So here's Park Lane. Edwards gets the steal. She'll outrun Park Lane to the other end and get the bucket. You know, she's just mentally into this game talked about being smarter and sharper. She is so sharp and in the passing lane, great footwork. And with a minute left in the first quarter, Aaliyah Edwards is in the double figure scoring already for UConn. Here's Shillin Hagens, tries to drive between players. No, rebound slapped to Satterfield. That doesn't go. 30 seconds to go, quarter number one. Mule tries to slide the ball into Edwards. And it's thrown away. And she was irate at Nika Mule for that decision. You know, she tried to make the perfect play, a pretty play. Sometimes you just need to make the easy play. Kind of reading lips a little bit. Look at the clock. Well, and that was the other thing. They could have eaten a lot of the clock. So Seton Hall to try and get the last shot off of this opening quarter. Here's Bembry. Was looking for Cooks, didn't get her. Park Lane tries to roll it in. It'll go off of Cooks and out of bounds. It'll be UConn's basketball with 2.4 to go. And this time, you will just slow it down and run it out. Well, UConn finishes that first quarter on a 17-2 run. Seton Hall 0 for 7 from 3 and just 19% from the floor in the quarter. UConn dominating, and Aaliyah Edwards leading the way after one. Uh, to camera right, underneath that basket, is Maria Marino. Hey, not long ago, Paige Beckers was hyping up her teammate, Aaliyah Edwards, on social media, calling her the National Player of the Year. I asked Aaliyah about that. She said, I appreciate the acknowledgement, but I'm a team player, so my first priority is winning a conference title, winning a national title. However, she did say she also wanted to improve individually this year. She said that 
her sophomore season was humbling and she just knew she could play better than she did last year. She called it a mindset shift of proving the type of player she is and how much she expects from herself, Alan. I, I think we're getting to the point of the season where we can begin to have the conversation. Is Aaliyah Edwards an All-American? Still a lot of basketball to play. I think so. So a 16-point UConn lead as we start the second quarter. Here's Shaylin Hagens. Travels trying to put the brakes on with Aubrey Griffin defending. You talk about Aaliyah Edwards, but obviously people love to talk about the offense, but her defense has been spectacular this year. She's been in the right position. You mentioned earlier, you know, not committing some fouls. She has much fewer fouls this year because she's in the right place, playing smart defense. Just an all-around, so much better basketball player on both ends. That's going to be a turnover to travel to on UConn. And it's those small details, right? But you see the coaching staff work with them uh, at these kind of things on practice. Where to place your feet, where the, you know, and, and all of that just has picked up yeah. another level this year. And you see it in the results no on the No question. And that mind, the, the, the shift in the way she thinks, that's the biggest difference for someone like Aaliyah Edwards. She's always had the talent. She's just decided to be great. Park Lane rejected by Griffin. Hagen's drive, nice floater by Shaylin Hagen's. Hagen's a senior from Manassas, Virginia. Transfer in from Penn State to Seton Hall for this year. 14-point UConn lead. Edwards. I don't know if that's the right shot for Lee Edwards. Not that she can't make that shot, but the first shot, stand there, look around, then decide to shoot, not typically the way to go. Park Lane defended by little, Griffin. A little mismatch inside. Nika Mule on Case Satterfield. That shot missed the mark for Seton Hall. And another empty possession for the Pirates. Mule not afraid to mix it up down low with the post players. Mari DeBerry into the ball game for UConn. Lopez Seneschal gets the first breather. Here's DeBerry. Nice positioning. Missed the layup. Got a second shot at it. Those are terrific minutes coming in for DeBerry. They need her. To score an open layup, really good position. Edwards <laughs> winds up in a dancing spot with Rod Creech. <laughs> she said sorry about that. And he said, Seton Hall ball. And she's going, wait a minute. How is that their ball? <laughs> Came over to try and make the steal, got a hand on the ball, but he was right there. And there was no place for either of them to go. We're lucky they didn't end up in our lap. I was worried about that for a second. on a Barnes drives into the ball game missed wildly the rebound stolen away from Juhas by Bembry she gets it to you got to give Bembry credit for not giving up on that play I correct myself it's Baines not Barnes was on a Baines with the hustle play for Seton Hall that pass almost a little too casual Edwards top of the key no Juhas gets it tipped to her. That misses. Aubrey Griffin with an offensive board. And Juhas drains the shot. Give Griffin credit for not giving up on the play, snagging that offensive rebound. Higgins will get the offensive foul called as she ran into Mule. Yeah, and you saw Mule's face go back by getting hit. And there, the good finish. Look at that by Aubrey Griffin. Just not giving up on the play. So 29-13, 16 point UConn lead. As we play in the second quarter, a reminder if you're just joining us, UConn with only seven available players tonight. That's going to be a foul in traffic, and it's going to be called on Park Lane. Well, second. Park Lane, see, they, they really are focusing on trying to take Lopez Seneschal out of the game and trying to disrupt Mule, but by doing that, she, Park Lane was holding Lopez Seneschal, and the official did the right thing, making the call.
20 on the shot clock for UConn. That shot was late whistle blocked, but a foul called on Amari Wright for first. And you see her get the ball. And she hit no. the elbow. Got the elbow, which forced the ball into the side of the backboard. So Lou Lopez Seneschal at the free throw line for UConn. You've said this several times. I'll repeat your line and give you a chance to add. Where would this team be without her this season? You know, Tony Bazella even said that to us today after yes. Seton Hall shoot around. And I don't think anybody expected Lopez Seneschal to be as good as she's as she's been for this team, but they would be nowhere near as good as they are if she did not transfer in. There's Baines, tries to step with a big step around Mule. Rebound fumbled around, back to Baines, and she puts it in. And the tough part, uh, DeBerry did the, the, the hard work by getting position and getting the rebound, but you got to hold on to it. Six points apiece in this second quarter. There's DeBerry, too strong. with another steal on anticipating a pass and a bucket for Aaliyah Edwards 12 points now just in terrific position always sees the ball great anticipation a lack of communication there defensively by UConn Park Lane kicks to right now back to Park Lane tries to work through the screen runs into the lane blocked by Edwards who else Mule feeds a running Edwards. 94 feet for Edwards for the bucket. Edwards is doing everything right now. What a game for Aaliyah Edwards so far. Gets the block and turns on the afterburners. Doesn't slow down till she gets the pass and the score. Wow. About halfway through quarter number two here in New Jersey. UConn opening up a 20-point advantage on Seton Hall. Aaliyah Edwards has broken out the Mamba mentality tonight here in Jersey. Well, and she's doing so much with it beginning on the defensive end. Now, you see Aaliyah over here, okay? Now, watch. She just comes over, times it perfectly. Park Lane didn't even see her coming, and then look at the way she runs the floor and finishes the nice dish from Mule. I mean, she has been everywhere. 14 points, seven rebounds, two blocks, two steals. And uh, probably more than any other on the court, the player that Seton Hall has no answer for right now. I don't know if there's many people who have an, would have an <laughs> answer for Leah Edwards. Now we all look forward Another to the Another Aaliyah, yeah. Yeah, of the, of the two Aaliyahs when South Carolina comes to town the beginning of February at the XL Center. Dorky Juhas back in the ball game. Amari DeBerry goes back out, starting five on the floor for UConn. Dembry. Park Lane. No. Nobody there for the rebound as... Well, Lopez Seneschal got cracked in the mouth. Yeah. And had fallen down. He's running back down the court, kind of doing that thing you do with your lips in your mouth when you're trying to check all the front teeth. Aubrey Griffin left alone for three. No, short. See, that's where they miss Fudd. <laughs> you got Fudd over there wide open on the layout, on the, the three-point line. It's money. Again, AZ Fudd not here with the team tonight, undergoing further tests back in Connecticut. Lopez Seneschal, 4-3. Looks like that whack to the mouth didn't bother her too much. There is Jordan, around and out. And a quick possession that comes up empty for Seat Hall. Four minutes to go, second quarter. UConn's lead is 21. Knocked away, but Edwards is there to try and scoop it up. Look at that. They're going to call a foul. 
That's going to be called on Jayla Jordan, her second on Seton Hall. It seems that these officials today, unlike Sunday, as soon as they see some physical play, they're blowing the whistle. The first half of, of Sunday's game yes. was very physical. They let it all go, and it became a scrum. Lopez Seneschal again, too strong. Mule fighting for the rebound, boxed out by Park Lane. <laughs> the smallest person on the floor. Here's Amari Wright feeding Park Lane. From beyond the free throw line, no. Jumped back off balance. Uh, Expecting a foul call, didn't get it. Now look at Lope Lope Lopez Seneschal in the bottom, in the middle of the lane, right? She gets hit, and then that left arm comes around and, that, and gets her in the face. You can see her, her left hand went to her mouth. Look, looks like it might be a little swollen. But stays in the game for her shorthanded Husky squad. The Seneschal kicks Griffin, Juhas. Shot clock into single digits. Juhas tries to post up inside. It'll be foul called on the floor. It'll be on Alesh, and Juhas will shoot free throws. A tale of two games, right, Alan? Yes. The way UConn played offensively on Sunday, they they seem to be just standing in quicksand today, moving much, much more freely, much more smoothly, much more with a purpose. First good from Juhas, and I think, remember Nico Mule talked after the Georgetown game about it, started with us kind of a sloppy shoot-around and a tired one. When we were here at UConn shoot-around earlier today, crisp. That gets knocked out of bounds off Edwards. It wasn't like a full tilt practice because they can't do that right now <laughs> no. with just seven players. But it was kind of like they ran through all of their sets and it, it, there weren't very many stops. Do that again. Somebody messed something up. Now, at this point in the season, you, you really don't need to do that. Jayla Jordan gets the first made three of the ball game for Seton Hall in nine attempts. Mule blows by everybody. What a heads-up play there by Mule. Seton Hall just didn't stop the ball. There's Higgins. Blocked. What a screen got set on Lopez Seneschal. Wow. Here's right to Jordan. Two bounces won't go. Knocked out of bounds. That's off the foot of Lopez Seneschal. Seton Hall basketball. This is just a savvy play to turn the corner and realize that there's no one there to stop you. That uh, number on the right for Nika Mule already. Six assists in the ballgame. Shy of halftime. So a fresh 20-second uh, shot clock reset for the Pirates. And Jayla Jordan is going to draw a contact and a foul against UConn. It's going to be against Aubrey Griffin. Gary Apple and Kara Walters coming up with all the first half highlights and analysis on the UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show presented by Duncan. Just a couple of minutes of game time away. Park Lane drives, tries to draw a foul, missed the bucket, and then gets called for a foul herself, trying to rip the ball away from Aliyah Edwards. That's three on Park Lane. That's devastating for Seton Hall. She's the school's all-time assist leader, has become that this season. An outstanding scorer. Had just come back into the ball game after a brief rest and now goes to the bench with those three fouls. And she's a senior, you know. I, I give Brazella credit for putting her back in. They need her. It has been a tough shooting game for the leading scorer for Seton Hall. Lauren Park Lane is one for ten. Two for Aaliyah Edwards. 15 points in this first half for Edwards. Mari Wright tries to feed it through. Edwards can't quite save it in bounds. Seton Hall basketball. Minute 52 to go in this uh, second quarter. And as you see, 19 on the shot clock for the Pirates to work with. Already jostling for position down low before the even inbound. 
shots on the corner. No by Hagens. Two Huskies there for the rebound. Lopez Seneschal fighting through. Yeah, she's working hard to get the ball. Seton Hall does not want her to catch it. Shot clock at seven. Juhas sets the screen. Mule kicks back to Juhas. Over to Lou for three. And, and you, you got to give UConn credit for their poise, but Seton Hall had defended that so well. That's 12 now for Lopez Seneschal before halftime. Right. Now Alesh, no, right into the hands of Juhas. Less than a minute to go, second quarter. Mule gets fouled hard. That'll be Jayla Jordan. And if I have that right, that's going to be... I'll wait on that because I'm not sure I have it right. <laughs> and her second. I just had to check and make sure on what I did. I marked down one of Park Lane's fouls in Jordan's call. Can't do that. Mari DeBerry will check back in for UConn, and Aaliyah Edwards will head to the bench for this final minute of the second quarter to extend her rest time. What a first half. Well, well-deserved rest for Aaliyah Edwards. Spectacular first half. Might even be, have a little cut that, that needs to be attending to. That might be the reason she went to the bench also. Took a seat next to Janelle Francisco and is getting a little scratch taken care of. So here's Mule at the free throw line. Gets both ends of that. And for the final moment of this quarter, the seventh and final player on the UConn bench available tonight, Ines Betancourt, will come in. So it's Betancourt and DeBerry with Griffin Juhas and Lopez Seneschal. Right, defended by Betancourt. They'll try and drive. Nice feed inside. That's a good play with uh, Jordan getting the bucket. Terrific execution by Seton Hall. Betancourt defended hard by Higgins. Well, smart play by Higgins, no, knowing Betancourt is a freshman. Juhas will work to the very screen. Now put up the three and get it! Wow. I would not have expected UConn to have 50 points in the first half. Here's Amari Wright, throws one up at the buzzer. It doesn't go. UConn's high this season is 98 on a couple of occasions. They're on pace to top that. And you're right, who'd have thought it? Aaliyah Edwards leading the way with 15 points. Lopez Seneschal with a dozen. Juhas with 11 and UConn holding Seton Hall to one of 13 from three and 25% from the floor. It is 50 to 22. UConn leading Seton Hall at halftime here at Walsh Gymnasium. Wow, Gino, we could take this so many different directions, but after, uh -huh. after Sunday's game, would you have expected your team to come out like this, not only score 50, but the defense, the energy, everything was spectacular. Uh, yeah, um, everything um, everything was exactly the way we, you know, we drew it up. Uh, you know, while I was away, I was drawing up this half of basketball. <laughs> and I'm glad I had a chance to come back and implement it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, you can't explain some of this stuff, right? You know, you can't explain what happened the other day. Um, and you can't explain, you know, what we're doing today. Other than to say, uh, I think our guys were really disappointed in the way that Georgetown game went. I think they were disappointed in uh, how we played um, offensively, defensively, energy-wise. And tonight, you know, I, I don't think there was one area of the game in the first half that um, that we didn't excel at. So, um, you know, we're shorthanded. But uh, the hand that we do have uh, is pretty damn good today. Yeah, think about Aaliyah Edwards and the way she played. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I know, and that's, you know, that's, you got her and Nika out there, you know, and they, they set the tone, and this starts going like that, and before you know it, 
uh, you know, the whole team's caught up in it, and it was just really fun to watch. Thanks, Coach. Good luck for the second half. Thank you. Our interview with the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema, presented by Duncan. Well, Gary and Karen are going to have a lot of highlights to show from that first half. Huskies hang half a hundred on the Pirates, 50 to 22 at the break. Commemorating some of the greats in Seton Hall sporting history here inside historic Walsh Gymnasium as we get ready to start the third quarter here on SNY. With Megan Clomo, I'm Alan Bestwick. UConn with an impressive first half to this game. Put up 50, held the Pirates to just 28, and no question, Aliyah Edwards led the way on both ends of the floor. Well, she was everywhere. I mean, and the energy, it was just, she played with such a purpose, and, and she anticipated everything. It was the offense, it was the defense. She just, the supreme confidence is with which she's playing is just so fun to watch. Great team defense, seeing the ball, stepping in the passing lane, running so hard. A nasty swat there and then gets the benefit on the other end. It was really just an impressive all around 94-foot effort for Aaliyah Edwards as she's already in double-double territory and we're just starting the second half of this game. Three Huskies in double-figure scoring in that first half and for Seton Hall head coach Anthony Bazella, everything that he wanted to see from his team in that first half just didn't happen. Their three-point shooting was off. Uh, UConn, he, they didn't get a lot of transition points but they got those big runs that he was afraid of, and so they start with that 28-point deficit in this third quarter. Lopez Seneschal with the first bucket. That's a two. Let's check in with Maria Marino. Thanks, Alan. I spoke to Seton Hall head coach Tony Bazella. He basically said what you were saying. He told his team, stop hanging your heads. We're getting good looks, but we're one of 13 from three. That's the problem. We're just not making our shots. Plus, UConn scored 10 points in transition off the fast break. That's from us missing those shots. Somebody's got to make them. And that's what uh, the Pirates are looking for. There was a missed shot by Nika Mule. Here's Shaylin Hagans over the top of Lopez Seneschal, and it falls. And that one rattled around and went down. Seton Hall had a lot of shots rattle around and pop out in that first half. And just one of 13 from three in the ball game for Seton Hall. Juhas feeds Edwards, and she couldn't handle it. It's good defense there by Seton Hall to knock it away. Park Wayne looked up to try and see if she had a shot available and dropped the ball. Juhas ahead of the pack. Will get fouled by Cooks. Not a smart foul by Cooks. You know, just an unusual turnover there from Park Lane. And so the third foul on Cooks brings Dorka Juhas to the free throw line. And Aubrey Griffin gets the rebound on the miss. She just never stops moving, Aubrey Griffin. Sets the screen for Lopez Seneschal, then rolls and can't make the layup. Juhas gets the rebound and gets fouled on the putback attempt. Give Aubrey Griffin a lot of credit for that offensive possession for you could to have another chance. Much to the chagrin of Tony Bazella, whose team worked so hard about boxing out and rebounding today, and there, UConn got a second opportunity. The rebounds are actually close in the game. It's 26-25 in favor of UConn, but um, on that one, Aubrey Griffin was the overriding force. Juhas can't make the free throws. There's another one for Griffin. On cue. Edwards gets inside position, misses the layup, gets her own miss, and gets that one. A smart play by Cooks to not commit her fourth foul. Here is what is no doubt a frustrated Park Lane. Feeds Higgins, she'll drive. No, Juhas there for the rebound for UConn. Good no pass initially on that outlet by Juhas, because Mule was being defended. 
That's a double-double now for Dorka Juhas. She'll post up. Kick to Griffin for three. You know, something about coming back to her parents' alma mater, Audrey Griffin loves <laughs> playing in this gym, has played some sensational basketball over the years. Remember that 25-point game she had here as a freshman. And they needed those 25 from her that night. Cooks, I think that shot was blocked. Edwards from outside the free throw stripe, rattles around and out. Has that frantic pace at the beginning of this third quarter that it did at the beginning of the first quarter. Park Lane all the way, under, up and in. Lopez Seneschal sees the defense coming, avoids, and gets the bucket. Just really good basketball there by UConn to read the defense and take what they give you. Park Lane gets tangled up with Mule. There's Hagens. No. And rebound right to the hands of Mule, who looked to push the transition. Numbers to the Pirates, but Griffin outruns them all. Well, she knew she was throwing it to Griffin, who has a motor unlike any other. Aubrey Griffin into double figures for UConn. Edwards just misses another steal. Juhas on the switch, and Griffin gets the steal. And she'll outrun everybody. Timeout, Seton Hall. A 13-2 run by UConn over the last two and a half minutes. These last couple of minutes, no question, 44 is the star of the show. Largest lead of the ball game for UConn over Seton Hall at 39 points. Aubrey Griffin with the steal and score. Mentioned Aubrey's family ties to Seton Hall. There's a shot of her dad, Adrian, in his playing days for the Pirates. And uh, Maria Marino has more on uh, Aubrey Griffin. She's the best athlete in our conference. That's how the Seton Hall coaching staff described Aubrey Griffin this morning in their scout. They remember all too well her breakout game as a freshman when she scored 25 and had 12 rebounds. I've asked Aubrey before, what makes you unique? And she said, the first thing is defensive presence. Sure enough, Coach Bazella warned his players, she'll make you pay for lazy passes. But Aubrey also said she just plays hard all the time and does the little things like setting screens or anything to help her team. Now she does that, and she's been doing it really well this season after being away all of last year. There's a three for Jalen Jordan for Seton Hall to break the UConn run. And by the way, let's just not also forget that Aubrey Griffin's mom, Audrey, was also oh. an athlete and a good one yeah. here at Seton Hall. Yeah. Track and field, all-star. Aubrey to the bucket again. Needless to say, she has terrific genes. Yeah. <laughs> That's 15 points now for Griffin tonight. The snap back of the head for Leah Edwards. And a very errant shot from outside from Park Lane as Aubrey Griffin was closing in defensively. That's going to be a foul on Nika Mule. One of those where she just runs through a defender. Well, you got to give Jordan credit because she, she stood there and took the charge. That's where, you know, Mule has to just, hey, just jump stop. Make the pass. She can make your look away pass to Juhas, who did a nice job running up the floor. But don't create that contact and knock the kid over. Victoria Keenan, no. Bembry skies for the rebound. Loses control. And Aaliyah Edwards will have the ball as we approach the midway point of this third quarter. Edwards strong to the rim, too strong. Victoria Keeter hands off to Jordan. No. Two it, UConn players fight for the rebound. It definitely seems that Seton Hall just wants to shoot a bunch of threes here to try to cut into this lead. Unfortunately, their three-point shooting has not been good in this one. 
Miscommunication between Mule and Juhas, and it leads us to a timeout past the midway point of this third quarter. A quarter where UConn has outscored Seton Hall 17 to seven. Huskies now with four of their five starters in double figures in scoring, the other with double figures in assists. Healthy lead for UConn, 38 midway through quarter number three here at Walsh Gymnasium. The Big East Women's Basketball Tournament was held in this building a couple of times, won by <laughs> UConn. This oh. is the 88-89 squad, notable among there. Would be oh, number... this is, you know what, I'm gonna, this is just embarrassing right now. <laughs> Good Lord. Number 33, uh, in that tournament, UConn won the championship game over Providence 84-65. They called it the MVP then. It was Kerry Baskin. She was unbelievable. Here's Victoria Keenan driving, kicks it inside. Three UConn players there for blocks. It goes to Jayla Jordan, and she gets the putback. So Nika Mule on the bench for the first time in this ball game, I think. And it is uh, Mari DeBerry, Aaliyah Edwards, Dorka Juhas, Aubrey Griffin, and Lou Lopez Seneschal. The five on the floor for UConn. Right, pestering. Juhas, feed it to Lopez Seneschal. Drives triple team, no foul. And a turnover here to Bembry. From the corner, Keenan, no. Bembry gets the rebound for the Pirates. Keenan will toss it up again, no. That'll be Lopez Seneschal on the rebound. Remember who the most outstanding player was of the second time UConn won the Big East tournament in this building? Our own Carol Walters. All right, Kara. Dorka Juhas, a 360 and in. That was a 1995. UConn beat Seton Hall 85-49 in the championship game. Edwards almost had another steal and run out. Keenan gets that to go. And a timeout for Seton Hall. Victoria Keenan, a great story, missed all of last season injured, and the first half of this year only made a return three games ago. She got the triple there. Three minutes to go, quarter number three here at uh, Seton Hall, South Orange, New Jersey. Anthony Bazella's Pirates with a quick timeout after getting the three and trying to generate a little something something here uh, to walk away from this game against UConn with to take on into their their conference play yeah they got a big game this weekend at Creighton and, and Tony was saying or at Marquette yeah. Tony was saying they, they got to be ready for that game they can sweep that series it's really important for them in their Big East in their quest to, to finish as well as they can in the Big East Lopez Seneschal too strong. Rebound gets tipped to her. UConn will reset. Nika Mule back into the ball game. Aliyah Edwards is on the bench now for a rest. There's a steal. Amari Wright read the pass and gets the bucket. A smart read by Amari Wright and exactly why you don't throw one-handed passes like Lopez Seneschal did. You can't pull it back. UConn with six turnovers on the ball game tonight, and we've discussed how turnovers have been a problem. Mule from the top of the key, short. DeBerry with the rebound. Good offensive rebound by DeBerry. Juhas, four and three from outside, and the big smile as she runs back down the court. She has really stepped up today. Four for four from three-point range. Jorka Juhas, wow. And a nice right-hand hook shot from Jayla Jordan for the Hall. Now they put on the full-court press here. Trying to trap Mule. Nice ball moving by UConn to break it. Parker wanted Mule to be called for a carry. Tend to shoot here for UConn. Lopez Seneschal off the Yuha screen. 
too strong. Here's Keenan on the run for Seton Hall. Feeds ahead to Park Lane. Now Jordan on to Berry, and they'll call to Berry for the foul. Well, Lauren Park Lane is one of the best players in the Big East Conference. You see her norms on the season. Two for 12 tonight from the floor. Yeah, UConn has done a really good job of making it very difficult on Park Lane as Aubrey Griffin was called for that foul. Aubrey Griffin has done a lot of guarding on her tonight as well as Nika Mule, sorry. And so yeah, that foul was, yeah. <laughs> that, um, that was that DeBerry. foul on DeBerry, which I thought DeBerry defended that pretty well. So here's Jayla Jordan. Played the last couple of years at Auburn. Has been one of the most effective players for Seton Hall tonight. And Inesh Betancourt checks into the ball game here with a minute to go in the third quarter. Lopez Seneschal and Juhas go to the bench for UConn. Here's front court pressure again by the Pirates. The point forward, Aaliyah Edwards, handling the ball. She's doing everything. Play in motion. Betancourt off the screen from Edwards. Back to Edwards for two. Again, that shot right above the top of the key. She didn't shoot that well last year. She may not have shot it at all. And now, I can't remember the last one she missed from up there. It's been impressive tonight. There's Keenan for three. Final 10 seconds of this third quarter. There's Betancourt looking for some help. Gets it to Edwards at the free throw line. Shot misses, and that is how the third quarter is going to end. A better quarter from uh, the Pirates scoring-wise. They get 20, but UConn outscores them by 7. 77-42 after 3. As we get ready to start the fourth quarter, our game reset is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Uh, Leah Edwards has been everywhere for UConn tonight. Jayla Jordan leading the way for the Pirates, but there have been a lot of stars we could focus on for UConn. How about we go with one who hasn't come out of the game yet? Yeah, Aubrey Griffin has played every minute of this game, and she's impacted it on both ends of the floor. She's knocked down shots. She's shooting 60% from the floor. She moves so well, cuts hard to the basket, really well defended there, hasn't committed fouls, just so active both offensively and defensively. 15 points, five rebounds, an assist, a block, a steal. And, you know, we, we talk about how undermanned they are. They've only yeah. got seven players, but when they're the right players, <laughs> it yes. doesn't really matter. And those seven players are all really playing well tonight. Certainly the five starters. There's Keenan with another three. No, Amari DeBerry with the rebound for UConn. So it's Mule, DeBerry, Betancourt, Edwards, and Griffin. The five on the floor for the Huskies here at the beginning of this fourth quarter. Ball was stuck there a little bit. Shot clock down to six. Going to be a foul called inside on the floor. Now, our next game on SNY is this coming Saturday afternoon from Gamble Pavilion. The Huskies take on the Butler Bulldogs. Our coverage starts with the pregame show at 11.30 a.m. Saturday. A little matinee action here on SNY. There's a foul on Jayla Jordan. Students back on campus in stores, so having the next couple games at Gamble should be a lot of fun. Shot clock at five. Does anybody realize it? No. So a turnover by UConn. <laughs> Do you love how Morgan Valley is aggravated? Gino's aggravated. They're up 77 to 42. That was the one bad offensive sequence they've had tonight. And they're mad. That's why they're great. Keenan throws it right into the hands of, of Edwards. Yes. 
Jordan shot missed goes back to Keenan. Uh, I'll say this the other thing you're going to need to Park Lane as she drives gets a nice bucket over to Barry. When you've only got seven players, when you put players six and seven into the ball game, you don't want to see a drop off in the level of production or in the defense and that kind of thing. And that's going to be really important for UConn, uh, you know, until some of these other injured players can start to rejoin the lineup. You know, and the hard part is the six and seven players that are coming in right now aren't necessarily the six and seven players. Right. You know, Inesh Betancourt was signed, you know, a week and a half before she arrived. Yeah. So, you know, she thought she might be the ninth or tenth player and, and come in when they're up by a lot. And now she, you know, now she, think about back to that Princeton game. Yeah. She played critical minutes. Had the ball in her hands, did have a start. Uh, in the season. There's Keenan from way outside. Well, that's why she keeps shooting, because she's got range. She has three of the Pirates' five made three-point shots in this game. DeBerry inside has it blocked. Well, DeBerry set a terrific screen and then rolled and was wide open. Seton Hall did a really good job of recovering. Maya Bembry with the block, the senior. So UConn with 20 now to shoot. Aaliyah Edwards drives. The kick out, Mule way off on the three. It's the Berry. Gets it! And brings all of her teammates up off the bench in celebration. That was a really good job by DeBerry to track down that offensive rebound. Keep the possession alive and then got herself fouled and is going to the line. And adds her seventh point of the game for DeBerry. Three of six from the floor, four rebounds for Amari. Park Lane loses the defense. So that's where the, the backside of UConn's defense has got to see the ball and know that Park Lane has it. She's going to look to drive. Leah Edwards will let the long one go. That will miss. Not by much. There's Keenan again from way outside. Long rebound kicks to Park Lane. Now Jordan. No, and Mika Mule there with the rebound for UConn. Meg, how do you make sense of all of these player losses and injuries and absences and the constant turmoil as DeBerry hits a three? And yet, here's his team, fifth ranked in the country, undefeated in Big East play. It, it's just bizarre. Like, I, there's no way, other way to describe it. I mean, the, the adversity they've been through is crazy, and yet how they've maintained you know, their, their toughness as DeBerry gets called for a foul there. But look at, they're still in first place. I, I give these kids so much credit and this coaching staff so much credit for keeping it together and just keeping the level of excellence in, in the craziest of circumstances. And you think about it, all right, 15 and two against the toughest non-conference schedule in America this season. And yet here they are, still primed with every goal they set out at the beginning of the season available to them to achieve. All right, and people look at Gina Moran and say, wait a minute, why'd you lose two games? <laughs> that's what they look at when they see the 15 and two. Well, that is the standard that's been set. DeBerry fell down <laughs> and threw the ball to a cutting bent court from her backside on the hardwood. Might be the prettiest and most unconventional assist on the season. Had the presence of mind as Park Lane lets a three go that misses. DeBerry with the rebound. Had the presence of mind to keep the feet off the floor so she didn't get called for travel. <laughs> question is, does that make the highlight reel on the night? The question is, how many different highlight reels will it make? Yeah, yeah. So all seven available UConn players have scored in this game. Edwards, no. Mule will get called for foul up over the back of Park Lane. Good box out by Park Lane. All right, taking to the rim, presented by Duncan. DeBerry. 
to, to Betancourt. Just such a heads up play by DeBerry. Smart move by Betancourt, but to just go to the rim. Well, Amari DeBerry in this one, 10 points now with six rebounds. And Lopez Seneschal thought she should have gotten a foul call there on that miss. Jordan, no. DeBerry with another rebound. UConn will push the tempo. Here's Griffin. The turnaround. Yes. And UConn only knows one speed. You'd think they want to slow it down, use some clock. There's Jordan gets away and gets the bucket. Jayla Terrific Jordan. pass, too. And she's really been the bright spot of the night for Tony Bazella and Seton Hall. 17, now 19 points for Jordan, the transfer from Auburn. And that assist from Amari Wright was spectacular. DeBerry looks down to see if her feet were clear of the three-point line. Her toes were on it, so doesn't shoot it. Tend to shoot. She'll step back for this one. And get it. <laughs> She's big smile on her face as she ran back on defense. There's not a kid who has more fun and is more fun to be around than Amari DeBerry. And her teammates are going crazy on the bench with each of those buckets that she scored. Keenan again. Got it to go. Twelve points for Victoria Keenan. Among the positives tonight for UConn, the three-point shooting has been spectacular. 69% from beyond the arc for the Huskies as Lopez Seneschal will finally draw the foul call on her way ruggedly through the lane. Timeout on the floor. 90 to 56, UConn, Amari DeBerry, two of two from beyond the arc in this one. Great collage of photos on Maya Moore announcing her retirement from basketball today. You look at all of those accomplishments, not just at UConn, internationally, in the WNBA. Meg, your thoughts on what Maya Moore has meant to basketball? Uh, how much time do we have? All you'd like. Yeah, I'm just such a spectacular human being, but the way she played the game, she played, she was relentless, played so hard, practiced so hard, just competed at the highest level. And, and it was such a joy to watch, uh, both on the college level, the pro level, the Olympic level. One of the all-time greats that Gina was ever coached. Her numbers at UConn alone, 154 games played. She averaged 20 points, eight rebounds, three and a half assists, and two steals a game. And the Huskies were 150 and four. How about that? They lost there. four games in four years. It's unreal. Congratulations to. Maya on formalizing her retirement from basketball today. Of course, she's on to many other great things, including a family. Here's Dorky Juhas. Too strong. Another rebound for Aubrey Griffin. Gino calls the play. Nika Mule puts it in motion. Huskies at 91. They've scored 98 three times this season. There'll be two more for Juhas and a foul. Good work for Juhas. She got the defender on the high side. A perfect pass from DeBerry away from the defense. See that? The defense was on the high side. And DeBerry threw it exactly where she needed to throw it. So the defense couldn't steal it. So Jayla Jordan has fouled out of the ball game for Seton Hall, and here's Dorka Juhas, 21 and 11. Eight of 11 from the floor, four of five from long range. And Juhas exits the ball game as Yudash Benford will come back in with three minutes to go. Satterfield working on Betancourt. They're going to call Betancourt for an arm bar. I'm looking around at the, at the stat sheet tonight for UConn and, and thinking about, you know, in this whole pursuit of perfection, what's there to pick apart tonight? Because from player to player to player, right, everybody has just been really strong. 
Gino Oriama will find Quincy. <laughs> but uh, that interview I did with him at halftime, he was as, as positive as I can ever remember him being. Well, that's going to be a travel and turnover by Bettencourt. Lost the handle. Seton Hall did a good job of getting back to take away, take away the fast break. UConn with nine turnovers tonight. Much better than their season pretty, average. Yeah, it's pretty good for UConn this year. <laughs> and, you know, I, it, honestly, I mean, this is a game between first and third place in the Big East, and we really thought coming in with UConn being limited to seven players, and no AC Fudd tonight for the Huskies, no Caroline Ducharme. Of course, Paige Becker's out for the season. I don't think no, we saw this kind Patterson. of yeah. I, I don't think we saw this kind of scoreline coming. I did not. I didn't see UConn coming out shooting, scoring 50 points in the first half. Lexi Arlesh misses, and there'll be a foul underneath. You know, Gino alluded to it at halftime, and, and Nika Mule said it after the Georgetown game. They weren't happy yeah. with the way they played Sunday at the XL Center against Georgetown. And what coaches want is to have a team that's mature and responds. And the, I, I think Gino, as he indicated at halftime, very happy with the way his team responded to their poor play. Here is East Hartford, Shailen Pinckney at the free throw line. 2021 Connecticut Gatorade Player of the Year, and of course led East Hartford to its first state title last year as a high school senior. And a quiet night for Pinky on the scoreboard, but gets the free throws there. Inside of two minutes to go. Berry forces it inside to Edwards. Griffin gets the pass and feeds it back to Edwards. Once again, Aubrey Griffin saved that possession. Pinkney gets blocked by DeBerry. Betcourt runs and gets the feed from Mule in the bucket. Ninety-eight. 58 UConn as we come down to a minute to go. Here's Baines. Blocked again by DeBerry. Smart defense by DeBerry. She had she's been foul prone at, at times this year. Did a nice job just keeping her arms up in the air. So UConn will slow it down as we're inside the final minute of this one. Gary Apple, Kara Walters standing by with our UConn women's basketball post-game show. You'll get to hear Gino Oriema's post-game news conference on that as well. As Aubrey Griffin drains the three from the corner. And the Huskies top 100 for the first time this season. And Griffin gets a rebound and gets fouled to put the exclamation point on just an excellent, excellent night for the junior. There was something about playing in South Orange for the Griffins, right? Her mom and dad, great athletes here. Aubrey has always played spectacularly here at Walsh Gymnasium. Griffin into the 20-point bracket again tonight. Remember, she set her season high of 29. Won't have time to reach that, but still. Perfect for the free throw strike again. She's done that a lot lately for UConn. And 22 points, 7 rebounds for Aubrey Griffin. Almost had another Griffin steal there, about it. yeah. Okay, Satterfield will miss. That'll go out of bounds off of Aaliyah Edwards. And with 9.2 to go, Seton Hall basketball. Well, UConn has shot 56% from the floor tonight. An amazing 66.7% from beyond the arc. They've out-rebounded the Hall, 48 to 38. And every one of the seven available players has scored. 
with two getting double doubles. And Nika Mule, by the way, 13 assists on the ball game. Final from South Orange is UConn 103, Seton Hall 58, the first 100 point game for the Huskies since March of 2021. Our player of the game presented by CSCU. This was a tough choice because there were a lot we could have picked, but we went with Aaliyah Edwards and rightfully so. Look at the numbers for Edwards. She just for a lot of the first half of this game was everywhere. Yeah, she set the stage for UConn and she allowed them to just start this game and, and dominated from the beginning and Seton Hall never really had a chance. A couple of end-to-end -end plays, a block or a steal on the defensive end and running to get the bucket. Aliyah Edwards, our play player of the game. And let's hear from the head coach with Maria. Coach. Just seven players available again tonight. Your team is dealing with this adversity. How? I don't know. You know, um, we just, uh, you know, we talked about a lot of things that are going on that, you know, we, ha uh, we have no control over. Um, you know, it's, it's been something that we've been, we've been forced to deal with now for quite some time. And uh, nobody likes it. And it's no fun. Uh, you know, so we just talk about what can we do, you know. These kids have an opportunity to uh, to make plays and play basketball and knowing that there's nobody to come in to take their place. You know, they get no help from the bench, so to speak. So they're learning how to, they're learning how to come through when they have to. And hopefully it, someday when we get everybody back, uh, we'll be that much better team for it. A handful of your players came through tonight, but talk to me about Aubrey Griffin. Well, you know, Aubrey's capable of having big, big games. You know, uh, she she can do it defensively. I thought it, her work on the offensive boards was terrific. Um, you know, she when when she's confident with her with her with her shot. You know, she just, she, she opens up a whole nother side of the floor for us, especially now without Carol and without AZ. Um, but she was just, you know, she was just feeling comfortable. And, uh, and Dorka was, Aaliyah was, you know, they just played, they played a terrific game. They really did. 13 assists for Nika Mule. She wasn't happy after last game. What can you say about her leadership on and off the court? Yeah, she was great today. Um, you know, we, we talked a lot about, you know, we can't get into a crazy, crazy game because we can't use up all that energy. We have to conserve some of it. And she has to control the tempo of the game for us. And I thought she did a terrific job of controlling the whole pace of the game and getting the ball where she was supposed to get it. And I know she's tired. I mean, I, the kid practices so hard. and She puts, you know, her whole heart and soul into everything she does. But... Um, you know, she's had an amazing, amazing year so far, and I, I'm just really proud of her. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Thanks, Maria. Thoughts of Gino Oriema as his Husky team runs its record to 16-2 and on the season, and they remain undefeated in Big East play. Amari DeBerry with a career high in scoring, but this assist will be the one that we all talk about. The feed, the bet court for the bucket.